What's going on guys and welcome back. October's season of new cards have been sourced and leaked. So today I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a season preview, checking out the upcoming cards and give some early impressions and ratings overall just break down the month ahead now in this current loki season guys we've got you know big time archetype defining cards between mobius ravona and then obviously loki we've got new archetypes forming in snap however next season in october we've got some cards here that are going to help boost some more unloved archetypes on reveal some junk disrupt style decks and then also some of the most complex cards that we've seen now that we're a year from the game being released. Now, obviously, some things to keep in mind today. Uh, these are subject to change. Uh, I will note we've never really seen an ability change when we're getting this close to a season. Uh, but some number tweaking, uh, usually on the power side, not typically on the cost side. Uh, but Eliath was changed from a five cost to a six cost. So there are some tweaks to look out for. Now, let's fast forward a few weeks into the spooky season. And we've got our new season pass card, Elsa Bloodstone who's a 2-2 with some massive potential. Now, currently, her ability seems insane. If we take a focus here, if you play another card to fill a location, you're going to be giving it plus three power. So the keyword here is play, right, guys? I mean, obviously, Dr. Doom and his bots aren't going to exactly work. Ultron, you have to play the card in the location. But this doesn't stop Elsa from being absolutely freaking crazy as a two drop. Now, Collector right now kind of has the crown for insanity in two drops i would expect that to kind of be tamed down by october but elsa is going to make these cards that can fill that location and abuse that mechanic so right off the rip guys the deck right now that's just insane with priority and just crazy in power is this kitty pride on top of angela and essentially you could throw in a shuri package and taskmaster and what you do is you dodge priority you double up the kitty and then you taskmaster making it very hard for opponents to win and then you add now plus three power every single time that kitty pride fills that location you're gonna get a few turns of that and it's gonna make this incredible to go ahead and plop down on maybe a sherry whatever it might be right and you're gonna have like what 25 something power it's gonna be really crazy if this does launch like this and this is definitely going to be the first main style deck that you'll want to try now, outside of that, what are some other cards that do the same kind of thing? Obviously, Silk is able to fill a location. Your opponent plays there, and then it moves out of the way. Captain Marvel, even though she just got that nerf, is awesome here, right? You can go ahead and safely play her in that last location, get the plus three power to her, maybe more with Forge, and then all of a sudden you have a big Captain Marvel that can try to win you the game. Uh, the other thing my head kind of goes to is, is potentially some destroy stuff venom carnage they oftentimes like end the lane there right or maybe a deadpool can smack on last and then you kill monger that deadpool there's a lot of possibilities for these cards that like to abuse and double up power like deadpool and then obviously if i can find him here i mean Dokken, he's another great example right i mean he's gonna get plus three that you can multiply as well lady death strike is a free forge you know throwing on a location kind of like shuri so it should give her the power before she does the on reveal effect uh, Mysterio counts as played, so you can get his clones maybe as the last turn. There's a lot of different things you can do. Ghost Spider, pull him away. I think this card has a ton of potential. I mean, looking at all the two costs, we look at Lizard with such high regard as a two cost five power card, whereas Elsa can give out what? I mean, up to nine, 12 power sometimes. So a ton of win behind the sales of a new season pass card, especially as a two cost. Now, for that reason, I'm going to give Elsa a four stars out of five. I think. This is going to be a really good season pass card with a ton of potential. You know, you are going to need some things to happen, right? But I, I don't see why you wouldn't want to run her into decks. Even something like Loki that likes to flood the board with a ton of cards. Now, quickly, before we go to the next card, I've decided to do the October cards as their own video and the November release cards as their own separate one as well. For the first time, I'm kind of separating them because I can spend more time breaking them down and really talking about the intricacies of the card. But let me know if you like it like this or do you want them all jam-packed into one video? It's a little bit quicker, but you get all the information. Let me know down in the comments below. Now, the next card up I have as the sleeper of the patch here, and it is Black Knight. Now, it is a one-cost, two-power card, so not that impressive. But after you discard any card, add the Ebony Blade, which is his token card, to your hand with that card's power. Now, the Ebony Blade is a four-cost card with zero power. And again, it's going to gain the power once per game with the power of the first discarded card. Now, being honest, I wasn't that excited about this card when I first read it. But the more I'm thinking about it, 
first of all, I'm just ecstatic with the love that this card has been getting a lot more each and every month. There's something to kind of build and change up the archetype. Like, it took Destroy a ton of releases to get its new style. Now, this card has this chance to get this, like, revival discard archetype and what i mean by that is first of all having a more reliable ghost rider right so having the ability to not only do silver samurai but now we have the chance to truly do some crazy stuff so let me break it down first of all lady sif is probably the best example you don't want to discard with calling win this is going to be a bit more of a heavy weighted uh cheating kind of think lockjaw like cheating big card style deck you're going to play lady sif you're going to go ahead and get rid of Let's say Infinite on turn three. Turn four, you have that new Ebony Blade. It has 20 power. Bada bing, bada boom. You play that down for 20 power. And then on turn five, you can even do a Taskmaster, right? And then maybe Ghost Rider and some nonsense. You can get so much power on the board. Heck, Taskmaster, then Absorbing Man. That's three 20 power plays, right? That could be Shang-Chi, but you get the point. Now, I will say, when you look at this card, it screams like, holy clip worthy, insane things happening. But you do need a lot of things to go right. First of all, you have to play the card down to even have the chance to have this discarded blade happen. And then also you need to have something like Lady Sif and then the card that she wants to discard all in your hand. So that's not going to happen all of the time. But the combo pieces are there. And once you start to stack other combos, you can really get this thing rolling. Now, Ghost Rider is really cool, but he's always lacked the ability to obviously summon back the man who summons himself time and time again in Apocalypse. So the card there can be used. The Black Knight can get that blade going with at least, uh, I would assume, 8 power, maybe 12 power. I think 8, though, because that's the first of the number uh, being discarded. But also, we have synergy with, like, MODOK, right? In a sense, if you don't discard anything until you play MODOK, essentially, you won't have an empty hand after because you're going to have this kind of new card generate into your hand. We're going to have to see how it works. Potentially, MODOK could go and scan everything. And as it kills that first card, the blade comes up, right? So it, we're going to have to see how it all unfolds. That's the way I read it. But MODOK is already so good. But it would be cool if we have extra synergy. Maybe even potentially pushing out Chavez sometimes in those decks. So Black Knight, we're going to give uh, like a three star. But we need to see how this combo piece works. I think it is going to introduce a new way to play discard. But time will tell. All right, guys, for our next card up, we've got the just hideous, the crazy, the monster man thing now man thing is a four cost five power car so pretty below the stat line there however ongoing effect one two and three cost cards on both sides yours and the opponents are going to have negative two power so right off the bat this doesn't look like anything too crazy you can kind of read it and be like all right i get how it works let's go to the next one uh, i do think this thing is going to be pretty cool i mean first of all it's going to hurt zoo decks uh, quite significantly but also you have like the just clear-cut synergy with luke cage right you know you don't take the negative effects they do so naturally i think it's gonna have a good place in a hazmat deck because why not right you can just push more negative power out on the opponent uh but that being said luke cage just stops this thing from really working and then you have a pretty bad play on your hands uh, I also like to see this in that Abomination style of deck. Like, High Evo Abomination it, it's not even played enough. The thing just got adjusted, and so we're seeing a lot more of these uh, Abomination style decks be played because we can push so much negative power, and Man-Thing and Abomination are going to work together really well. So I like the, uh, the thought process there. But Abomination and Man-Thing in a High Evo deck... I think is really fun and has a lot of possibility to push out insane amounts of power uh, pretty early. Uh, obviously, Spectrum, we have Onslaught, we have things that can work with that. But also, this is where Junk Disrupt is going to get a nice little push. Uh, Green Goblin, Debris. I think Debris could be filthy here, right? We have Debris pushing out all those rocks, and then all of a sudden, you now have the opponent having to like just take on a bunch of negative two in these locations. Man Thing has some potential to it and at that point if you have let's say four cards on the opponent's side and you wait to play into the last turn of the game he's now becoming a four cost 13 power card i think i did the math right there which is impressive i mean thanos just got a huge nerf obviously but he could be an answer to thanos if he arises in the future and i do like some synergy with black widow as well as a card that we'll talk about on a future video i think there's this new kind of cheeky combo 
that is going to be made up between the two seasons. And we'll get to that pretty soon. I'm going to give Man-Thing for now a three-star status. Uh, again, I'm not just kind of uh, hanging three stars as average for everybody. But I do truly think he'll have a place in Disrupt. Um, the Luke Cage killing him altogether makes me kind of want to put him at a 2.5-ish, maybe 2. Because he has a direct counter. But hey, I don't know. Debris and the junk decks are definitely on the rise already. And this is going to be a nice kind of puzzle piece into that deck to make it much more competitive. All right, we have two more cards left and we are on to Werewolf by Night. Now, this has got to be the most cracked card of the season. I'm going to spoil it already. I'm going to give this probably a 4.5 stars, mainly because of the possibility of him in one archetype alone. Now, Werewolf is going to be a 3-3. After you play an on-reveal card at any other location that he's not at, he'll move there and gain plus two power. Now, this seems not that crazy. You play him on turn three. How many turns do you truly have to even play other cards to get this guy boosted up? That is where Beast comes into the picture, guys. This seems so freaking crazy to me for so many different reasons. Now, obviously, we already have these bounce decks that had their heyday in the meta playing these on reveal effects like the hood and Iceman, and then you have falcon to get them back but now we have the ability to make these cards zero cost and we can just get this wolf going crazy in power stat line i think he's gonna have a nice addition to this deck without slowing it down uh, we also have other cards that kind of work with this werewolf like uh, obviously the biggest probably winner of last month in craven craven is gonna love all the movement from the wolf and this is going to be a nice addition into the Silky Smooth deck that has been on the rise now for about a month. Also, the Surfer. I know I don't want to say it for every 3-cost card, but he has so many on reveals that already play into the deck. He's a 3-cost card. It just kind of works together quite nicely. You don't really know where he's going to bounce to, but again, I mean, I can just sort by on reveal and we can talk about it. Uh, but hell, the new, like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but like kind of legit 1-cost card by a large margin is Snow Guard and this puppy... Gives you two on reveal cards for the price of uh, just playing her down, right? So a lot of potential here for Werewolf by Night. For a three cost card, the scaling and the possibilities is why I'm going to be giving it that 4.5 star status. All right, buckle down. This is the last one, but it's a long one. And it is probably the most complex per se card to come to Marvel Snap in terms of what it can do and what we even understand of it so far. We've got Nico Minoru from Runaways, if you're a fan. And good God, this card's insane. It is a one cost, two power card. And essentially her ability, and I don't think we'll see this within the game, but it says on reveal, after you play your next card, you're going to cast a spell. So essentially, Nico is going to serve a couple of purposes within Marvel Snap. But let's go through the spells first and how wild these are going to be. For spell number one, we've got an on reveal. After you play your next card, it's going to become a demon. Now, we don't know if this is the demon from the hood. We don't know if that's going to go on top of the power that's on that card. But already, not a bad synergy play that you can have with some pretty bad power card options that you just want to throw out there. For spell number two, we have an on reveal. After you play your next card, you're going to destroy it. And then you're going to draw two cards. So it's kind of like a better Adam Warlock in some ways. Now, why would you want to destroy a card? We'll get to that. Spell number three, after you play your next card, move it one location to the right okay so kind of interesting spell number four on reveal after you play your next card give it plus two power are you picking up what i'm kind of thinking here with nico spell number five on reveal after you play your next card replace the card's location so kind of like scarlet witch spell number six on reveal after you play your next card add a copy of it to your hand kind of like cloning vats love that one we'll get to that as well and then on reveal after you play your next card for spell number seven, double Nico's card's power. So this was another card when I first read it. No doubt, it's going to be one of the most fun cards in the game. A lot of possibilities, a lot of chaos. I just, with Loki, you can see, I love that. But the more I thought about it, there's one archetype, maybe two, that really fit the playstyle of this card. Now, first of all, I think she's meant to be a one drop that you can play late and it doesn't feel bad. That's kind of the first thing that I took away from her. A lot of like the super sweats are going to say, why play her when you can play Iceman? Too much randomness. But guys, I think Deadpool could be the perfect deck when it comes to Nico. If you look at all the spells we talked about, plus two, destroy it, add a copy. 
it just makes a lot of sense that Deadpool could truly be the card and the archetype that Nico is going to fit best into. Now, I don't know how the spells are going to work. I don't know if you can tap to see the card. I don't know if there's a new interface, if they're going to start introducing spells, if this is just a whole new mechanic, if it's a card, which I don't think it is. Either way, love Deadpool, and I love the possibility of maybe Phoenix Force that wants to move and destroy and do these kind of interactions as well. Giving this thing power is always good. It makes a lot of sense that Nico is going to play best in Destroy, but also as this plug and play card. Right off the bat, I think Nico is going to be one of the more skill heavy cards that we're starting to see into the game. We know as we move away from release, we're at a year now as of October, they're going to try to introduce more and more complex cards and strategies into Snap, which I think is important, right? You know, we've got the Shuri kind of double power play Taskmaster, good to go. But also, like all games, you have these cards that are hard to master, kind of scary when approaching it, but have a ton of potential. Now, she might be way too reliant and way too chaotic. I don't know how her spells are going to work. So I am going to only give her a three stars for now because we just don't know how she's going to work. And this could definitely matter when playing Nico in a competitive format. Although, just like the other cards we talked about, I do think Bounce is a huge home for Nico, and that's why you could have maybe Werewolf and Nico together and just get a ton of spells and have this whole new archetype within Snap. That is going to be the October season, and again, I'm just looking forward to Loki season. we got a lot of cards that are going to change up a ton of Marvel Snap, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys the leaked, you know, data mines and just talk about it, and I do expect there to be some changes, especially by our reactions and your comments below. So comment below what card do you think is going to be the most buck wild crazy or there's no way it can release like that, either bad or good. And then go ahead and keep an eye out for the October, November spotlight video. And then obviously to follow this one, maybe in a day or two, I'll have the November cards uh, data leaked as well. Some crazy ones there. Anyway, guys, appreciate you guys hanging out today. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe down below if you're enjoying the content and if you want to support my channel. And uh, until the next one, guys. Happy snapping.